Okay, heating and air race fans. Another pass at changing Schrader cores. Take the cap off, put a tool on, unscrew the core, screw the core in, done, right? Well, not exactly. What I'm finding is that it's more complicated than that. And also what I've discovered is that my analysis of the core failure due to temperature was not complete because I'd missed something very important. And that was that before all that happened, the system had run for about three hours with a broken capillary tube on the indoor TXV. I didn't know it was broken. I started the system, it started up running, then we left for about three hours. Came back and the system wasn't cooling. The low side pressure was going down to 50, which means elevated head pressures. And there is a contributor to the high side core failure only. So, they've been replaced. I've proven that there's been leakage ever since. Very small, but leakage. So the way I'm going to check for that, again, after snugging this one down, is I'll put the low side core, I'll put the uh, mic right up against it. Maybe if the bird will shut up, maybe you'll be able to hear a little puff. Yep, a little bit of puff. There's leakage. High side. A little bit of leakage. Liquid line? No. This is very disturbing, because if that was not a good tight seal cap, then this system would be here losing refrigerant all day and all night. So, the tools for this are the replacer tool for the pressurized system. That's the handy dandy little stem. Uh, the key to this tool is to make sure that the core fits very snugly inside these fingers. And the instructions say, if it doesn't fit, squeeze the fingers together just a bit. But the tool I was missing the last time I did this was this calibrated torque screwdriver. Very important to torque the cores correctly, and I didn't do that. And after getting the screwdriver and feeling the torque with my fingers, I'm quite certain I've grossly under-torqued them, and that would lead to leaks. Uh, Schrader Pacific cores specified three to five inch pounds. My hands and arms are calibrated for, for foot pounds, but my fingers have never been calibrated for inch pounds. So I was flying blind. New core better than nothing, but new core that's not tightened correctly is a leaker. I got two leakers. And I'm not going to go finish this system and button it up and walk away with, with leaks. I'm just wasting my time. So this screwdriver. I bought it from McMaster. It goes from two and a half to 11 inch pound. Pull the handy dandy collar back and rotate it. And the stem comes out and reads inch pound. So I'm going to set that for about. About three and a half. Maybe just a hair more. Between three and a half and four and a half. Uh, it's good to lubricate these outside seals, but not the threads. Schrader Pacific says be careful lubricating the threads because lubrication reduces the coefficient of friction way down. Lubricated threads take much less torque than non-lubricated, and the specifications for torque, as far as I know, are for non-lubricated threads. If not, they wouldn't give an additional warning for if the threads are lubricated, then you got to change the torque. So, there's supposed to be one of these tools that has a click torque wrench built in this handle. This one does not. It's just fastened in. That tool was not available. I contacted the manufacturer's rep, and they didn't even know about it. I think it was a Robin Air tool. So, the answer is that this tool just happens to have a little hex in the end. 
and it just happens to fit this hex driver like such so when the tools in place on the sealed system and the old car core has been removed and the new one's been put in then I'll use this screwdriver I'll snug it down with this just get it installed until the core touches and then I'll tighten it home with that of course after lubricating all the seals in the tool I'm using clean air tool oil mineral base the information I've read on PoE says that mineral oil is miscible in PoE so no problems and a very small amount okay there's the old core removed and there's a trick to this I unscrewed the core partway the handle came rocketing out when the when the core unscrewed enough to put pressure on the shaft there and the stem came rocketing out without the core so I had to put the stem back in to find the top of the core and then hold in with force on this so the system pressure can't shove that stem out and decouple it from there it takes pushing in on this stem and then rotating it and watching the stem <laughs> to see when it stops rotating it'll stop rotating and give a little click as the threads run over the thread start that means that the core has been completely unscrewed then very slowly let the pressure push that shaft out because if it goes too quickly it could drop the core I don't see a thing wrong with that core but it was leaking why does something about that look different than this I don't know but I think the seals damaged see the uh, seal on the end the one leg on the paper towel see how the black is showing out and on the new one it isn't I don't know exactly what caused that or what it means and the most important tool safety glasses <laughs> regular glasses off safety glasses on good view up close okay I pressed in with my thumb like on a on a syringe and just touched the core down and when I did that it wasn't leaking and since I didn't tighten it enough <clears throat> the plunger stayed in for a bit and then the pressure pushed the core away and the stem shot out so that suggests a mechanism for the leak not enough torque so I relocated the core I turned the core in till it was snug I released the pressure on here I'm going to open the valve again still under pressure redo close release the pressure bleed the pressure off and now it's not under much pressure now I have a torque driver I'm going to torque it to about four slip isn't that sweet I'm gonna let it rest for a minute the indication that the core is leaking or bypassing or whatever is it with the valve open the stem is pushed out just slightly what I drop so while this tool is still attached I'm gonna release the pressure with the valve open press that in <clears throat> and let it be for a minute and see if it pushes that stem back out that'll indicate leakage okay five minutes later or so the stem is not popped out 
it is possible that these cores are such that they simply will not be completely self-sealing for 10 years. Maybe that's a little unreasonable expectation. One of the documents from Schrader Pacific cast a little bit of doubt on these cores. They didn't, spe they didn't explain. But um, that's asking a lot of those little seals. It just may be possible that a very good sealed cap is required. And that makes sense because all valves have leakage. And my goal here is to, to eliminate the leakage for the short term hours or days which I'm doing service work and then seal the caps off with Loctite or the uh, mechanical PE suggest Teflon tape in the event that, that uh, there's some slow leakage that pushes the Loctite through the threads. So I may not get this perfect, but I'm going to optimize it as much as possible because I cannot have any more blowouts when I'm working on it. That's a hazard. Now a little tip on using this tool. It's now on the high side access port. The tip is withdrawn, the valve is open. It's tightened on down here. So to find the core, just push this down gently until it touches. Push down with a couple ounces of force and rotate. And it'll drop. Then push it on, maybe a sixteenth or so. And then unscrew it while holding down and I can't do this with one hand so I gotta put the phone down. That time worked perfectly because when with drawing the core it was like this I held down like this with the thumb and used the other hand to rotate the knob and I was looking like this I could see the relationship between two brass parts and I kept turning this counterclockwise until the stem stopped going outwards and I heard a click. And very carefully raise that up so it doesn't come snapping out and throw that off the end. It shouldn't come off the end. It's on there pretty tight, but you never know. But here is a core from the high side And it looks similar. See the rubber extruded? Now maybe that's normal because the new core's never been under pressure. I don't know. But by golly, that ought to seal. So there's something different about the used core. So if nothing else, that's a way to tell which is new and which is used. The used one will have this black ring showing. Interesting to note, there was more pressure on the low side than the high side. That's odd. If it's equalized, I'll be about the same pressure everywhere. Except that the indoor coil is quite likely warmer than the outdoor coil because it was down to 67 last night and the indoor temperature is over 70. High side cord been replaced. <laughs> Gonna wait and watch the handle. For some reason, I don't know why, but the liquid line core doesn't leak. I'm not going to bother it. Maybe, just maybe, I tightened it properly. And about five minutes for this one, and the handle has not popped up. So I'm going to pull it up, shut that off, and unscrew this one. And pray that the tool doesn't come rocketing off. And replace the cap. <clears throat> Very interesting note. At the time, especially on the low side core, when the torque driver reached, it should have been a little over four inch pounds. At the time it reached torque, the core also stopped turning. Almost felt like they'd build a mechanical stop into the core. Let's look at it and see if we can see one. And it is quite possible that what they've done 
just put that shoulder right there as a stop. See that that top there? That kind of looks like a stop. So they might have built in that stop so the torque wrenches or torque screwdriver isn't needed. I don't know. It's critical. I can let the cores leak, have another blowout because I didn't torque them correctly and lose 200 bucks in refrigerant or I can buy a $120 screwdriver. I'll take the screwdriver option. Then I have a nice tool to use later. Uh, word on these cores. These cores are effectively two valves, not one. Push on the pin, the cup down here on the end opens. That's obvious. That's the proper valve. This body seal, the blue thing, it can also be considered a valve. Critical difference, the proper valve, the one on the end, is pressure closing, is the term. The system pressure tends to push that valve closed, which in my mind makes it less likely a candidate for a gross leak. The body seal, however, is the wrong way. It's pressure opening. So insufficient torque or too high system pressure will tend to cause that body seal to leak because the pressure is pushing out on the core. And there's much more force on the core because it's a larger diameter. It's upwards of the, of the um, 0.210 nominal for the thread. So that little button on the end is probably, I don't know, 180, 180 thousandths. So big difference in force. But I suppose it is possible with excessive system pressure to actually open that outer seal. Now, maybe they're intended that way. I don't know. I've never talked with anybody inside this industry, so I, I have no further knowledge. So, for what it's worth, there it is. KBYP did it.